Hi guys, welcome to the new session of RBI 24/7. My name is Mansi Anand, and I welcome you to this session. So guys, as you must be knowing that in this session we discuss a set of five five questions that can be of use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams, right? So let's not waste any time and move straight away to question number one. And before doing that, guys, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel. As always, if you have watched our video for the first time, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button. You can always press this bell icon if you want to get notified of the new videos. You can join our Telegram group for the doubt solving process. Moving ahead to question number one. So this is the question number one for today. This question says, SEBI has proposed to ease ownership norms for entities that plan to start new stock exchanges in India. Which of the following are the objectives of SEBI behind this move? Simple enough, right? So this comes from a new, uh, this comes from a news that is being covered in newspapers nowadays. Moving ahead to solution, and correct option for this question is option E. Option E means one and four. One means increasing competition between stock exchanges, and after that lowering the membership fees. Guys, this is a very simple. Uh, concept. See, if you don't, if you, if you haven't even heard about it, you can guess this answer uh, in a very simple manner. Because see, it is being told here that SEBI is trying to ease the ownership norms. That means, इसका मतलब क्या है कि SEBI चाहता है कि stock exchanges को own करना या आप stock exchange के मालिक हो, ये process बहुत easy हो जाए, right? So SEBI wants it to be easier for parties to be the owners of stock exchanges basically they want that there should be more stock exchanges they want people they want parties to encourage to open new stock exchanges right one reason behind this is increasing competition because if competition will be increased then it is going to be beneficial for the investor ultimately and membership fees is going to be lowered so let's go to the details here you can see the norms that SEBI has come up with. SEBI says that for setting up a new exchange, the promoter may hold up to 100% stake initially, then they would have to bring it down in the next 10 years. So they are saying that you have all the power, you have all the shareholding initially, but then you have to bring it down. Why you have to bring it down? Because ultimately they want that ownership should be scattered. See, initially they are asking, Shuru mein wo kya keh rahe hai? कि आप पहले तो पूरे मालिक होंगे एक स्टॉक एक्सचेंज के बट उसके बाद आपको अपना जो ये शेयर होल्डिंग पैटर्न है इसको कम करना पड़ेगा और कम क्यों करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि अगर एक ही एक ही पर्सन एक प्रमोटर या कुछ सेट ऑफ प्रमोटर्स बहुत लंबे टाइम तक एक स्टॉक एक्सचेंज को ओन करेंगे तो देयर माइट बी प्रॉब्लम्स या उनकी मोनोपोली भी क्रिएट हो सकती है सो फॉर फॉर मिटिगेटिंग दैट इशू दे डोंट वॉन्ट द मोनोपोली ऑफ promoters to be there for long that is why they are saying to bring down the promoter shareholding in the next 10 years but initially they are telling you can have the 100% rights in order to uh, in order to encourage promoters to come up with new stock exchanges right here you can see some other details guys these are just factual details i think you can uh, read them on your own at present sebi says exchanges to maintain a 51% shareholding by public and 49% by trading members associate agents so there has to be a minimum public shareholding foreign entities are allowed to hold up to 15% in domestic stock exchanging now they are also making it easier for foreign entities to come and open stock exchanges in india see one reason behind this is to break the monopoly of nsc national stock exchange and BSE and Metropolitan Stock Exchange. These are three stock exchanges which have most of the transaction in India. Out of these three, NSC takes the lead, right? So NSC is the biggest stock exchange in India. Mein. Although it works efficiently, but SEBI thinks what if something, uh, pro some problems happen with NSC, then obviously all investors are going to face problem. That is why it is better to have some alternatives, right? So for doing, for breaking the monopoly of NSC, they are trying to bring in more shareholders, uh, sorry, more owners of stock exchanges. 
and for this they are trying to lure foreign entities right see you can see here any person domestic or foreign other than a promoter can also acquire 25 percent of the share holding in case of an existing exchange or a depository any entity may acquire up to 100 percent and then reduce their share holding in the next 10 years right However, for an acquisition of more than 25%, SEBI approval will be required. So, they are allowing but they are saying let us uh, analyze that whether these entities are able to open stock exchange, whether they will be able to manage these stock exchanges well or not, right. So, that is why you need SEBI approval to do so. So, these are some shareholding patterns which have been recommended by SEBI. So, this is uh, only a recommendation till now. We will have to see, wait and watch that what is going to be the impact of it, right. So, one reason I told you breaking the monopoly of uh, NSE, other reasons behind this can be to lower the membership fees. Obviously, because if more stock exchanges will come, that is going to increase competition. If competition gets increased, then obviously there will be many exchanges providing the services and in order to lure more customers, they are going to lower their membership fees, right. So, transactions are going to be cheaper for the, uh, cheaper for the investor ultimately and for this they are trying to lure foreign capital. So, that they come they, they uh, and they practice their expertise and reduce the transaction cost for investors and reduced transaction cost means more investors would want to do trading, right. So, that is ultimately going to create a more liquid market. So, this is wrong. They want to break the monopoly of NSE, reduce the monopoly of foreign stock exchanges. No, they are trying to attract foreign capital into opening up stock exchanges in India. That is why 1 and 4 are correct and the correct option is E. Okay. Guys, if you want, you can take a screenshot of it if you want to have this factual information for further use. Okay. Second question says, the central government has allowed EPFO and Provident Fund Trust to invest in units of DASH. Correct option for this question is option D. Option D means public sector debt ETF. So, if any public sector undertakings come out with some debt, come out with some bonds or come out with some debt securities and there are ETFs which are putting their money into such securities, now EPFO and Provident Fund, they can put their money into such investments which were earlier restricted, right. So, this has been allowed by the central government. Guys, see one reason here is that central government as you know they have been suffering from loss of taxes because of the lockdown induced by COVID-19 and they are looking to open up more sources of revenue. So, this is also a source of revenue because see public sector undertakings if money goes into these PSUs because if EPFO and PFs will be allowed to invest into ETF then the money is ultimately going into public sector undertakings where the major shareholder is government. So, you can see how the government has its benefit here. One point is that the government has because they want that we have to get more money from the PSU. If you remember, we have discussed many questions in which we have talked that how the government says to the PSU that you have to get more dividend. Do. Uh, government has been asking PSUs to give them more dividend in order to fund their losses or compensate their losses due to reduced taxes, right. So, this is also going to be a revenue for government because more money going into these ETF means more money going into public sector undertakings where the major shareholder is government, right. Here you can see some more information. There was a notification which allowed Provident Fund and EPFO to invest into public sector bonds such as Bharat Bond ETFs, right. See, one major point here is that whether 
it is going to be profitable for epfos and these provident funds or not because these uh, public sector bonds these etfs they have not been known to perform well that is why that can be a tricky move here four tranches have been launched of bharat bond etf so far right see you can see here that these type of etfs public sector etfs they usually have a return of 4.5 to 6.6% 6 but the interest that epfo provides to its subscribers is 8.5% so aap dekh rahe ho kaise epfo ko jo interest dena hai wo 8.5% dena hai par wo kama nahi pa rahe hain utna aur jahan pe unko investment allow kiya ja raha hai that is 4.5 to 6.6% so there is a mismatch right because they are making money they are having returns of this much but they have to pay out this much so there is a mismatch which so this return has also to be matched by the provident funds that is why we need to figure out that whether this shortfall it can be figured through some measure or not so experts have been called for a transfer of risk to subscribers rather than provident fund as a solution to this mismatch so now ab experts what are experts saying that whatever money is being invested by epfo and pfs into these bonds whatever money will be invested by them let's transfer that money to their subscribers so if they are facing any loss they must not be forced to pay such a high interest rate and their subscribers should be made to bear the loss rather than epfo funding it out of your out of their own pocket see because unko kama itna rahe hain aur dena itna interest hai to jo difference hai wo epfo ko apni pocket se fill karna padega so in wo uh, jo experts hai wo ye kehte hain ki ab pocket se na fill karna pade isliye ye loss jo hai hum transfer kar dete hain towards the subscribers right moving ahead to the next question Here is a question which says, which gives you some statements about unitized funds, and you have to select the correct ones. Correct option for this question is option E. Option E means option one to statement one, two, and three all are correct. Okay. First of all, we have to understand what is a unitized fund. In this word, unitized, there is a word called unit, right? so the unit now what is the meaning of unit here see this is a simple this is simply a fund which takes money from a number of small investors so these are all small investors they are putting their money into a pool here is a pool where they are putting their money right now this pool is going to invest money somewhere now this unitized fund they say that whatever profit or loss this pool this fund is making let's give a value to investors on the daily basis so that they know that what is the value of their investment let's create unit out of it right so that is where unit comes into play see aap isme aapne chote investors ne milke pool mein paisa dala और अब इस पूल को कहीं पे इन्वेस्ट करेंगे इन्वेस्ट करने के बाद जो भी रिटर्न आएगा उसको रिटर्न को नंबर ऑफ सब्सक्राइबर्स में डिवाइड कर दिया जाएगा सो वट एवर रिटर्न दिस पूल इज गोइंग टू अर्न दैट इज गोइंग टू बी डिवाइडेड अमंग द नंबर ऑफ सब्सक्राइबर्स टू नो द वैल्यू ऑफ ईच यूनिट दैट इज गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड मोर इंफॉर्मेशन टू दीज स्मॉल इन्वेस्टर्स दैट वेदर दे हैव मेड अ प्रॉफिट और दे हैव मेड अ लॉस right so that is a unitized fund creating units out of the fund so this is a structure which is usually followed by pension funds so this is the same unitizing structure that is being talked about this EF, epfo that we learned about in last question so experts are saying ki isi tarike se jo bhi losses hain if epfo is making losses let them Uh, go on to the subscribers and let's make them into smaller units so that the burden of that loss is shared among the subscribers right so creating units out of the pool here you can see the statements pool of assets several investors 
focused investment such as single stock usually the investment is not really diversified they try to put money into some safer stocks like blue chip companies or some safe bonds assets in the pool are managed to a specific objective <coughs> sorry so there has to be a specific objective for example pension funds they do it in order to provide people with savings investors are provided with a daily unitized value for the portion of their investment that what is the value what is the value of each unit of their portion of investment that is why all three are right here you can see some more details used in employee benefit plans such as pensions employees can offer unitized stock funds that include companies publicly traded stock usually many uh, many a times what happens is companies they provide their own stock to employees as a benefit right under the employee stock option program they provide their own stock and then they are going to provide details about the uh, profits or loss that the stock has been making to their employees that is a unitized fund typically also include some cash right so there is some cash and there are stocks so they total the assets they they uh, accumulate the assets and then try to divide it by number of subscribers in order to provide them with a value for greater efficiency in managing a company stock purchase plans offered to investors because it provides more information this is also used by insurance companies right moving ahead to the next question okay this is question fourth here which says what does it refer to you have to tell the correct meaning of it and correct option for this question is option a option a means fast tag so fast tag is one thing that has been uh, that that has been getting into newspapers on a daily basis because we have been studying about digital payment so much so fast tag is also a part of it right fast tag is simply a payment method that allows people to make payments at toll let's say you are going from one state to another and in mid of that state in the way you have to pay some toll aap road trip pe ja rahe hain aur aapko ek state se dusri state jana hai to aapko beech mein kai jagah toll bharna padega but agar aapko kuch aisa system mil jaye if there is a system that allows you to make payment in a in an easy manner you don't have to stop and get money out of your wallet every time because that takes so much of time right so to make the system more efficient fast tag has come into scene where a sticker can be put up on the car and the devices will read all the data and deduct the payment automatically without the driver or the car owners having to pay toll tax every time right so it's a in a, it's an electronic toll collection system it's an electronic toll collection system operated by national highways authority of india based on rfid technology radio frequency identification technology which is the underlying technology of fast tag now how is fast tag going to be useful here you can see as i told you can be fixed upon cars prepaid rechargeable tax for toll collection do not have any expiry date so if you have some money left into that account that can be used on your next journey so as long as they are not tampered with you uh, and you have some balance in your account they are readable at the toll plazas you do not need to worry about the balance left in the account vehicles which have fast tag enabled on them do not have to stop as charges are deducted automatically from the prepaid or bank account when the vehicle is moving right so that also helps it to reduce pollution and to reduce congestion on the highways because the vehicles they are moving in a swift manner they are moving in a fast manner at a good speed and they do not have to engage in transactions every time right so that makes the uh, process speedier and reduces the pollution levels on highways and also helps to plug revenue leakages because the amount or the money or the tax is going to be deducted automatically moving ahead okay guys this is the last question for today which says there are 10 people each of them pays 1000 every month for a period of 10 months in this group 
there is one organization takes care of all the meetings first meeting all the 10 people meet deposit rupees 1000 each total sum of 10000 is now available this per the person who bids the lowest for 10000 gets the amount after deducting organizers charges what type of structure is it so this is a very common system that is used to uh, find credit for the people who are usually unable to get credit through banks correct option for this question is option c that is chit fund guys if you belong to some business families or agar aapke ghar mein aapke parents investing karte hain to aapne bahut easily unke muh se committee ka naam suna hoga isko easily committee dalna bhi kehte hain chit fund is a more organized form of this committee system right ye ek tarike se ek informal structure hai jo logo ko loan deta hai right so it simply provides credit to people <coughs> usually these people who uh, get into this organization, get into this group, they know each other. Now what happens is, what is the mechanism? The mechanism is explained to you in this case. Some people get together, right? For example, in question, it is given that there are 10 people who have formed a group. Now these 10 people, they are going to contribute a fixed amount every month. Let's say that fixed amount is rupees thousand right they are going to do it for 10 months so number of people in the group equivalent to number of periods for which this process is being carried carried out right so every month now you see that since there are 10 people contributing 1000 every month 10,000 is going to be collected every month right now each person out of these 10 people is allowed to take this 10,000 home for every one month. Let's say someone has an emergency and needs money and first month when they have collected this 10,000, this person comes, let's say there's a person called Ram. Ram needs some urgent money and Ram goes to the organizer and tells that I need some urgent money. You have collected 10,000 from all the people. Let me take it at 9200 rupees. Because obviously there are going to be some charges. And the earlier you take this money, the more discount you have to take. Here Ram is taking 800 rupee discount. Right. So do you see the benefit ram has only paid 1000 this month and he is taking home 9200 but he is not this is not free of cost obviously he would have to make contribution for the coming 10 months so ultimately he is going to cover up this money he is going to uh, pay rupees 10000 but the point is he got that money when he needed it urgently so it is an easy source of credit for those people who are usually unable to get it through banks because usually what happens is people in this group they know each other right so ram has got rupees 9200 basically there is a bidding happens let's say in the first month ram's friend sham also needs money but Sham said, I will take it at 9300, not less than 9300. And Ram agreed at 9200. So the lowest bidding person gets the money, right? If Sham had said 9100, he might have taken this money home, right? But here Ram said it, that is why Ram took it because he was the lowest bidder, right? So this is the concept of a chit fund. And next, and this bidding happens month after month. Some terms and conditions can be different according to where the chit fund is placed and what are the terms and conditions of the scheme. But usually this is, this is a basic structure that goes on. Now in the second month or in the third month, in the upcoming months, Ram cannot bid because he has taken the money once. So who, the person who takes the money in the initial months has to take more discount, whereas for someone uh, for, for whom money is not urgent and he or she can wait till the end of these 10 months that month that person is going to make a benefit because they will have to take lesser discount because obviously the bidders reduce one by one and that is why the number of people is equal to the number of periods for which this process is carried out so this is a chit fund i hope now you understand the system right 
it's 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 a form of credit or it's a form of support that can come in handy but see obviously there are some loopholes this organizer person who is conducting all the meetings who is uh, taking all the responsibility who is collecting the money and distributing it might run away with it right so here are some other details about chit funds you can see basically means chit basically means transaction known by different name in different parts of the country right mechanism is that one person enters into an agreement along with a specified number of people such that all of them subscribe to a certain fixed amount of money or some kind of gain <coughs> right okay when the person's turn comes either by claiming it himself or by a lot mechanism let's say if no one wants to bid in that case they either decide mutually that who wants to take it one month because see one subscriber gets to take this money only once in the entire process that is why if there are 10 people there are going to be bidding there are going to be 10 months in which money is going to be collected because each person gets to take money home once but the person who is going to take it initially will have to take more discount whereas someone who waits till the end will have to take a lesser discount right but see the incentive for the person is that he or she is getting money now someone who takes it early so, uh, for example ram took it in the first month he got 9200 rupees the good part for ram is because he can make the payment slowly and steadily by paying 1000 every month but he got a lump sum amount of money together which he can either use to fulfill his obligations or to buy something right so that is the benefit by means of periodical installments over a period of time he must repay the amount of money gained right so that is the point here you can see some differences between a mutual fund and a chit fund mutual fund based on investment standards and policies chit fund is quite informal in nature although many big many big groups they get involved they form different groups at different parts of the country where they run it but it is not as regulated as mutual funds right so it is basically a money it is basically a pooling of money to provide it to needy people rather than a basic investment strategy right managed by a fund manager and usually a small expense ratio but here the chit the, the responsible person the organization takes a huge cut as a, a huge cut to bear, to cover up for the expenses right well regulated maintained by sebi normally chit funds are not regulated by any government body it, it it is regulated by the law that is chit funds regulation act 1982 right quite secure regulated by the government security is not here because organization can sorry organization or organizer can always run away with all the money collected and people might lose their money forever there have been certain cases like this subject to market risks and volatility of the market because money is ultimately going into market not subject to such risks but the risk is ultimately of the security right okay So guys these were the five questions for today I hope you learned something new from this video if you did then do not forget to hit the like button because I'll be back in next session with some new information till then keep your studies going on and I'll see you in the next session thank you for being here